Okay. Well, interestingly, I think the way you've set this up makes good sense because the current predicament with the vaccines, and there are two of them that mm -hmm. are rapidly moving towards widespread distribution, um, shows us both the strength of the engineering approach and the weakness of the engineering approach in the context of a complex system. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, the engineering approach caused us to be able to generate, and I say us, I mean humanity, to be able <laughs> to generate vaccines in less than a year, which is a very rapid uh, production production schedule. And, you know, there is no way you should regard this as anything other than a spectacular achievement, no matter what else may be true of these vaccines. Mm -hmm. The ability to get a vaccine that actually does create substantial immunity, and it looks really good in this case, after two, uh, two vaccinations, it looks like 90% successful or close to it in both cases. Um, so that's an amazing achievement. The question is, what else does it do? And I want to point to um, three things that I believe are worrisome in this case and that mean that your normal model, your normal model for how to feel about vaccine safety may be good or it may be cruddy or probably it's somewhere in between. But this doesn't belong in the same category. And unfortunately, because we use these heuristics, and because there is this voice out there that for many different reasons, uh, some of them purely financial and some of them uh, policy in policy based, uh, there is this voice that sort of wants you to default into standard vaccine brain. And it's not appropriate here. So a few episodes ago, uh, maybe in the Q&A, we raised this just briefly and I reported that I had had a conversation with a with a mutual acquaintance who would ask me, you know, what, what do I do? What, what do I know? And I, I, at that point, it was just, just beginning to emerge. And I did not know that they were mRNA vaccines. And what I said to her and what I said on air that I had said to her was, uh, it might not be effective, um, but it's unlikely to be any more dangerous than any other vaccine. And, um, I think, uh, I, I think that is not true. Um, and, and I don't know, I think, I think we can't know if that is true. How about that? It is possible um, that the safety is even greater than other vaccines. Um, but because um, exactly this technology, this is the first time that it's ever been approved for use in humans, and because one of the benefits of an mRNA vaccine is that it doesn't require the virus itself to develop it, and so it can be developed and distributed extremely rapidly. So it's no accident that we are seeing two mRNA vaccines as opposed to more traditional like um, antigen or protein-based vaccines um, is precisely because it is one of the key features of an mRNA vaccine. And... Um, the fact is that there are just there are a couple of things about what this is doing that are so novel. They aren't inherently dangerous, but they are inherently novel. No. And we inherently hold on and we inherently don't know what happens down that novel road. Okay. So I want to I want to level us all up here, okay? These vaccines and if you freaking toss us off YouTube for speaking literal careful truth and explaining it, then uh, we'll go great guns on this because we have to stop playing this stupid game, mm -hmm. okay? These vaccines are dangerous. That does not mean they are harmful, okay? And the distinction is this. We do not know what the consequence of these vaccines will be on a body long term. It may be that the consequence is not serious harm or that serious harm comes to a very tiny fraction of people and it's well worth it in the context of, as you point out, the harm that we know comes from this virus. But the way to think about this is Russian roulette. Is Russian roulette dangerous? Yes, it's fucking dangerous, right? But it only harms something like 18% of the people who play around, right? So the thing is, it has no harm to most people who experience it, right? And the point is, the risk that comes from pulling the trigger in Russian roulette 
is not the same thing as the harm of the bullet that either is or isn't in the chamber. And so... The distinction is an important one, but that's a dangerous analogy because there is no benefit to playing Russian roulette. Well, I would agree, but my point is simply about when we say that something is safe, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And when we say that something is safe, what it means is that we know it doesn't do harm. It doesn't mean that we have not yet identified a harm. 